We just learned that JSX isn't real HTML. It's JavaScript in disguise. And since it's not HTML, it has its own set of rules we need to follow. To save time, I have already created four components to demonstrate these rules. Let me walk you through each one. The first rule of JSX is that every component must return a single root element. You can't return multiple elements sitting side by side. They need to be wrapped in a parent container. Let me show you what I mean. Here is userprofile.jsx. We've defined and exported a component called userprofile. And the code looks perfectly reasonable, right? We want to display a heading and a paragraph. But ESLint is already giving us a warning that JSX expressions must have one parent element. For now, let's ignore this warning and import the component in app.jsx and see what happens. Import user profile from dot slash user profile and add it to the JSX. Save the file, take a look at the browser, and you can see we have an error. React is telling us adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Remember from our previous lesson, we learned that JSX gets converted to react.createElement calls. Under the hood, react.createElement returns an object which is then returned by the component function. And in JavaScript, you can't return two or more objects from a function without wrapping them into an array. Similarly, in JSX, you can't return two or more JSX elements without wrapping them into a parent element. So to fix this, we need to wrap the two elements in a parent element. Let's wrap them in a div tag. Opening div and closing div. Save the file and you can see the red squiggly lines disappear. Check the browser, refresh, and we see our user profile component rendered. H1, code evolution, React course, and paragraph, author Vishwas. If you inspect the element, you can see the wrapper div for h1 and the paragraph tag. Now what if we don't want the extra wrapper div? Maybe it's messing up our CSS layout. Well, React has a solution. It provides a special component called fragment, which we can use to wrap our elements. At the top of the file, we import React. So import React from React, and then use react.fragment component to wrap our elements. So instead of the div tag, react.fragment. And this is a component that the React library provides. If we save the file, head back to the browser, we can see the h1 and the paragraph don't have a wrapping div anymore. This div is from app.jsx, which wraps all the content or all the components we have invoked so far. So React fragment groups our elements for the return statement, but doesn't add any actual HTML to the DOM. Very important to keep in mind. Of course, typing react.fragment every time is a bit long, so React gives us a shorthand, empty angle brackets. And we can remove the React import at the top. Much cleaner, and this is what most React developers use. Check the browser, refresh, and we see our user profile continues to render. So that is rule number one. Every component must return a single root element. The second rule is that in JSX, every single tag must be properly closed, even the ones that don't need closing tags in HTML. I've created a new file with the component contactform.jsx to demonstrate this. The component name is contact form, and it returns a form with two inputs for name and email and a break tag in between. This is valid HTML in the sense that it will render in the browser. In HTML, input and break tags don't need to be closed. But JSX is stricter. You can already see ESLint flagging with red squiggly lines under the tags. JSX element has no corresponding closing tag. Once again, let's ignore this for a moment and import it in app.jsx. So import contact form from dot slash contact form and invoke the component in the JSX. In the browser, we see an error. 
and terminated JSX contents. In JSX, every tag must be closed. For self-closing tags like input and break, we need to add a slash before the closing bracket. Let's fix this for our component. Forward slash closing, break tag forward slash closing, email forward slash closing. Save the file, refresh the browser, and we see our form component rendered name, email, with a line break in between. So the second rule is that every tag must be properly closed. And the rule applies to all self closing tags image, input break, HR, meta, link, and so on. They all need that closing slash in JSX. Now the third rule is attribute names must be written in camel case. Since JSX is an extension of JavaScript, HTML attributes that conflict with JavaScript keywords need different names. And since attributes written in JSX become keys of JavaScript objects with react.create element, they need to be valid JavaScript variable names as well. Let me show you the third file I've created, styledform.jsx. The component name is styledform, and it returns a form with labels and inputs. This looks like standard HTML with classes and attributes. Let's import it in app.jsx. Import styledform from dot slash styledform and add it to our app component. Save the file and check the browser. We see our form at the top here, but we have errors in the DevTools console. React is warning us, invalid DOM property for, did you mean HTML for? Invalid DOM property class, did you mean class name? And invalid DOM property tab index, did you mean tab index with an uppercase I? Now here's the issue. Class is a reserved word in JavaScript used for defining classes. And for is used in loops. So in JSX, these attributes, which conflict with JavaScript keywords, get renamed. Class becomes class name, and for becomes HTML for. And other attributes, like tab index, get renamed to tab index in camel case. Let's go back to the component file and fix this. So replace all occurrences of class with class name, I'm going to select class, press command D, and type class name. Similarly, for attribute, I'm going to select both the for attributes, and this is going to be HTML4. Finally, tab index is camel case. Save the file, refresh, and the warnings or errors disappear. Now these are just few examples. In React, many HTML and SVG attributes are written in camel case. And if you accidentally use the standard HTML attribute name instead of the JSX version, don't worry. React will print a message in your browser console letting you know what went wrong and even suggest the correct attribute name. So that is rule number three. Attribute names must be written in camel case with reserved words like class and for being exceptions. The fourth rule, which is actually more of a superpower than a rule, is that you can embed JavaScript expressions directly in your markup using curly braces. Let me jump to the fourth file I've created, candidateprofile.jsx. We have a component called candidate profile, and it returns a heading and a paragraph. Peter Parker, web developer with five years of experience. This works, but it's completely static. What if you want to make this dynamic? The beautiful thing about React components is that they're just JavaScript functions. And that means you can write JavaScript code inside them just like any other function. Let me add some variables. Within the arrow function, const name is equal to Peter Parker, const role is equal to web developer, and const years of experience is equal to five. Now, how do we use these variables in our JSX? This is where the curly braces come in. They're your bridge between JSX and JavaScript. So for h2, we specify curly braces and the name. We replace web developer with curly braces and role. We replace five 
with curly braces and years of experience. We are binding the values in JavaScript to our JSX using curly braces. Let's import the component in app.jsx, import candidate profile from dot slash candidate profile and invoke it in our app component, candidate profile. Save the file, take a look at the browser and you can see the variables are displayed. Peter Parker, web developer with five years of experience. But here's where it gets really interesting. Inside the curly braces, we can put any JavaScript expression, not just variables, but calculations, function calls, anything that evaluates to a value. Let me show you how. Let me add one more variable, is available, and set it to true. Now, in the JSX, we can do calculations. A paragraph tag with the text started in curly braces 2025 minus years of experience. We can also do ternary operator. So paragraph tag status colon curly braces is available. And if that is true, available for hire, else not available. And we can even do method calls to get the contact email. Paragraph tag, contact colon curly braces, name, which is Peter Parker, dot to lowercase, dot replace, empty spaces, with the dot character, and after curly braces, at email.com. Save the file and check the browser. We can see all the JavaScript expressions are evaluated and their results are displayed. Started in 2020, status available for hire, and contact peter.parker at email.com. Very nice. All right, here is the key takeaway. JSX rules exist because JSX is JavaScript, not HTML. Once you understand that, these rules make perfect sense. Single root element, that's how JavaScript returns work. Self-closing tags, that's XML syntax. Camel case attributes, that's avoiding JavaScript reserved words. And curly braces, that's your gateway to all of JavaScript's power. My goal is to show you not just what to write, but help you understand why React works the way it does. Once you get the why, the what becomes so much easier. And hopefully, that's exactly what you're experiencing as we go through these concepts together.